We are here at the Driscoll Hotel and we're doing a history tour. Audrey's going to give me all the top spots of things that have happened here throughout the years. Audrey, what are we doing right here and where are we standing? So right now we are standing in the middle of the lobby. Um, this is kind of the start of the tour. This is where we start the story. So the Driscoll opened in 1886. Um, however, the story really begins in 1884. Okay. And so at the time, Austin was the westernmost city in Texas. And at the time, ladies and gentlemen would take a horse and buggy down what was called the Main Street of Texas and they would watch construction at the Texas State Capitol building. That is when Colonel Jesse Lincoln Driscoll entered the scene. He had big plans, big dreams. Yes. Um, and he noticed that Austin didn't really have a place to host, you know, all of these celebrities and politicians and all of these people whose travels were suddenly taking them through Austin. Okay. And so he wanted to build the finest hotel south of St. Louis, and he hired the renowned architect Jasper in Preston. He bought this lot. It was uh, at the corner of Brazos and Pecan. Okay. Obviously, today it's Brazos and Sixth. Right. Um, so he bought this lot for $7,500. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which it's a is, steal now. <laughs> yeah, it's roughly 400000 in today's money. No big deal. Yeah, totally reasonable Affordable. price for land. So he set to work. Like I said, it took quite a bit of time to actually build out this beautiful hotel. Yeah. And opening day was December 20th, 1886. 1886. 1886, that's wow. right. Yeah. And it's been here for so long. It's definitely an icon here in Austin. Lots of history. Yeah, let's go with just kind of some stuff here in the lobby itself. Okay. Um, so at the time... These were uh, said to be the largest entrances in the Southwest. Um, okay. So we have these beautiful archways on the entrance, but at the time there were three entrances. So we have this one here, this one here, and then where the front desk was, was another okay. entrance. These two were the gentlemen's entrance, and this was the ladies' oh, entrance. Oh, there's, yeah. okay. Yeah, and that was so the ladies could cut across to the stairs, get up to their rooms. Okay, that's Yeah, fine. so they wouldn't have to smell any cigar smoke or hear rough talk from the gentlemen, of course. Um, fine with that now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, these columns, so the whole building was built in the European Richardson Romanesque style. Okay. So the hallmarks of that you're going to see, like I said, are these big archways, these columns throughout the lobby, these high ceilings. Um, right here where our dome is, yes. this actually used to be a skylight. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's a four-story skylight capped by a dome that would let light into the hotel and also help with airflow and circulation. Huh. Yeah, and then in 1950, they added central AC. Uh, yes, so they we love air. Very glad that they, they <laughs> did add the central AC. Um, and so they built over the, the skylight. And then in 2003, we added this beautiful stained glass dome. It was designed by Stanton Studios in Waco, Texas. It's beautiful. I was here for the Texas Independence Day. Yeah. And I had the pleasure of seeing bulls walk yes. through these doors. So they're pretty wide. They're pretty wide. Um, fun fact, actually, my great-grandfather rode an elephant through this lobby in the early 1900s. No big deal. Uh, he lost that's a bet. Really cool. <laughs> so that's he lost been, a bet? He lost a bet. Um, that's the coolest bet to lose, I think. We don't know where he got the elephant, but that has been uh, family lore. <laughs> that's actually really cool. Um, I did talk about it in my interview here. <laughs> Why would I hire you? I'd feel like I'd have to hire so. you. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's go a little further down the lobby um, to talk about some of the artwork that we have here. Okay, let's do it. So Audrey, you've brought me over to a piece of art. What is this? What are we looking at? Yeah, so these two were actually painted for our centennial celebration. So in 1986 uh, by an American portrait artist named Ann Nelson Sweat. Uh, this one is called The Celebration, and this depicts uh, the first big event at the Driscoll. So it was January 1st, 1887, so just a couple weeks after we opened, um, and it was the inaugural ball for the then governor, Sol Ross. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then this one over here is called The Invention. So Austin's very first interstate phone call was made from this lobby in oh, 1899. Cool. Yeah. Um, at the time, phone service at all was still kind of a rarity. So for the Driscoll to be able to make interstate phone calls definitely marked it as like the height of luxury, the height yeah. of cutting edge technology. That's so cool. All yeah. sorts of people came out. They were really excited to uh, try this new way of communication. That's awesome. So yeah, lots of moments in history happening literally right here. Literally right here. Um, the artist likes to put herself in her painting. So she's okay. actually the blonde woman in the white dress. Right here in front? Mm-hmm. And the blonde woman on the phone. And then she also added a few nods to our haunted oh. history. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Her hands are a little shuddering and ghost-like. We like to say she's being tickled by Samantha, who is one of our more famous urban legends. Oh. Um, and then she actually did a little depiction of Samantha, the little girl right by the, On the frame. Shoulder. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So Audrey, we're standing in front of a painting that many have attributed to Samantha. 
And why don't you tell people who Samantha is? Yeah, so Samantha is one of our more famous ghosts. Um, she was a little girl. She was a senator's daughter in the early 1900s. Um, she very tragically fell down the stairs. She was playing with her ball um, and passed away. So legend has it that her spirit has stayed at the Driscoll, um, and she has been with us ever since. So. Guests have reported, um, specifically up here by her painting, you know, that it gets suddenly cold or they can hear her kind of laughing and running and giggling. Um, there have also been reports of hearing her in the lobby running up and down the stairs. Um, she's a very friendly ghost. She's a little mischievous. I mean, she's a four-year-old oh girl. Um, so she likes to, you know, turn the water off and on, flicker the lights. Um, she'll sometimes tug at guests' clothes or tickle their feet. But uh, Samantha has fun around here. Yeah, she looks like she has fun. <laughs> we love I'm Samantha. I'm not feeling much right now, but I will say looking at this picture is a little bit eerie. But it's also a beautiful photo. It is, yeah. Or painting, I should say, not a photo. Where are we standing right now? We are in the Maximilian room. Um, yeah, so this is one of my personal favorite rooms here. Um, and that is because these mirrors kind of have their own story. Okay. So, yeah. So in 1850, um, Ferdinand Maximilian was chosen to be the figurehead for the French puppet regime in Mexico. Okay. Um, he needed a wife, of course. So enter Princess Charlotte of Belgium. Okay. Um, she was ready to take the throne, take the title. The couple got married. Charlotte changed her name to Carlotta. Um, so they became Emperor and Empress Maximilian. Uh, they moved to Mexico and things were going well for them for a very short period of time. Okay. Um, and then Benito Juarez started becoming locally very powerful. Okay. And so the French kind of pulled their support. Um, it just wasn't worth it for them to try to like hold on to this regime that was so far away when someone else was becoming so powerful locally. Um, obviously, this was bad news for Ferdinand and Carlotta. Right. So Carlotta set sail back to Europe. She thought if she were to meet with the French court in person, maybe she would have some sway. Maybe that would, you know, get Help. that support back, you know. Yeah. Um, they refused to even see her at all, but she was determined. She went to Italy, and while she was in Italy, she was awaiting audience with the Pope. Um, she got the devastating news that Juarez and his troops had overtaken the palace um, and executed Ferdinand before a firing squad. Oh, not good. Yeah, so um, she was devastated. She never returned to the Americas. She kind of spent the rest of her life in sadness and in solitude. Um, but later in life learned there had been a belated wedding gift from Ferdinand to her that had been on its way to the palace when she left. And it was these eight mirrors. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they are obviously ornately detailed. They are diamond dusted. Um, and each one is crowned with a bust of Carlotta herself. Aww. Yeah. It's kind of heartbreaking, but very cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful gift. Um, and she was a beautiful woman, obviously. And so kind of as the story goes, the couple's furnishings were scattered um, when the palace was overtaken. And in 1930, the Driscoll was undergoing a big renovation. And so this was a men's parlor that was being converted into a men and women's dining room. Mm. And the GM at the time, his wife just loved antiquing. Okay. So she was at an auction in San Antonio. She saw these mirrors and just thought they would be a great addition to this room. And she bought the full set for $2,500. No way. Yep. Um, they're worth about $9 million now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. She didn't have a ton of context behind what they were, so they brought the mirrors over, they had them installed, and they started kind of digging into the history. Um, that's when they learned about Ferdinand and Carlotta, and so they named this room the Maximilian Room in honor of them. So now we're in the ballroom, and tell me what we're looking at. So right behind us is a portrait of Mount Bonnell um, with a little version of the Capitol and a little version of the Driscoll in the background. Oh, cute. Yeah, I just it saw it. <laughs> I was like, where? That's so yep. cute. Way in the background. Um, so this is our ballroom. This is historically like that very first inaugural ball for Governor Saul Ross was in this room. This is kind of where we've had historically a lot of our big events. In 2004, George W. Bush had his election night watch party here. And then after the Battle of the Alamo, the Daughters of the Texas Republic, um, they had a meeting in here to determine the fate of the Alamo mission, so whether they were going to leave it standing or tear it down. Um, that was a really long meeting, obviously. Sure. Yeah, it was very divided, strong opinions on both sides. But it's still here. But it's still here, so they did, they did come they to a decision, to yes. <laughs> and um, with this painting, you know, okay, so it's cool because, you know, the Austin skyline has grown so much. Mm -hmm. And that's all that's in this right now. I think that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, our little baby skyline it's of cute. the 1800s. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, also in this room, these panels used to be, speaking of the skyline, these panels used to be windows. So up oh, until cool. like 1930, yeah. guests could see through the window straight to the Texas State Capitol building. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now You're I think developed. you would see walls. Yeah. But Just. that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that used to be... Um, a second skylight. So, yeah, they obviously painted this beautiful mural. Um, 
version of the skylight after they boarded it up, slit yeah. from the sides, always a beautiful sunny day here in the ballroom. Of course, just of come course. here when it's raining. Exactly. <laughs> We're now standing where KTBC first started. Now it's called the Victorian Room here at the Driscoll. Audrey, why don't you tell us some history facts here? Yeah, so this room has lived so many lives at the Driscoll. At one point in time, its kind of first life was as the American National Bank. Um, and oh. so behind us is what was the teller window at the time. Okay. And then, yes, it was KTBC, um, which was also owned by Lady Bird and LBJ. Um, so this was the home of that. And yeah. then in... Uh, the 30s, it was a barber shop and spa, and then in the 70s, it was a nightclub called Scandals. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, lots of different <laughs> things. And yes, there's a lot of history here at the Driscoll, but this room specifically was the start of KTBC. Lady Bird bought it, started us up, and now we're here today. We're not here anymore. We're literally a few <laughs> blocks up the road, but it's really cool and exciting to be a part of this history. For sure. So the Jim Hogg Parlor um, was named after the 20th governor of Texas, Jim Hogg, cool. um, but has a little more recent political history. So LBJ, um, he stayed here kind of during his legislative term, and then when he was president, anytime he was in Texas, he would stay at the Driscoll. That is why we have the LBJ suite. That is where oh. he stayed. Um, and at the time, the LBJ suite connected to the Jim Hogg Parlor. And so he would use this parlor as his meeting space, um, kind of a parlor for you know entertaining socially or having cabinet meetings. Um, um, anything like that. So in this room, he watched the election results from the 1948 Senate run um, and the election results from the 1964 presidential campaign. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then also in this room, the 1934 Texas Rangers convened uh, before ambushing Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, so oh, that was cool. their little war room for that. Huh. That is really cool. Yeah. I feel like LBJ is like scattered throughout Austin everywhere. For sure, yeah. And um, LBJ definitely has a lot of history here at the Driscoll as well. LBJ and Lady Bird actually had their first date in the Driscoll Grill. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's actually really cute. I did not know that. Yes. Um, one of my like favorite little artifacts here is in the hallway leading to the LBJ suite. And it's a letter from Lady Bird um, from December 31st, 1999. And she's just talking about like all the special times they had here. And it's really sweet. That's so cute. We are at the History and Honors Corner. Audrey, what are we looking at? Yeah, so um, over here we have a couple different things. We have some portraits of Lady Bird, um, portrait of Lady Bird and LBJ and friends watching that 1964 presidential election. Um, down here we actually have, so one of our spaces, the Crystal Room, mm -hmm. um, was originally the horse stables of the hotel. Oh. Yeah, um, and in the 1990s, they were doing a renovation on the room. They pulled up the carpet, and in the carpet, they found some leftover nails, horseshoes, a cigar box um, from when it had been the stables. So these no are big all, deal. yeah, no big deal. So these are all actual artifacts um, from the 1800s. Oh, that's that's actually really cool. Yeah, and then right over here. Uh, so in 1969, um, the hotel closed. It was going to do some renovations, and the money kind of dried up. Um, and the Driscoll was actually going to be torn down and turned into a parking lot. Yeah, so the Driscoll Hotel Corporation formed. They sold stock to the public for $10 a share. Um, they raised a bunch of money, and they were able to get the Driscoll registered as a historic landmark. Oh, cool. Yeah, so they were able to save the Driscoll um, and then put some more money into rebuilding. And then in 1970, they reopened. There was a big reopening party. Uh, they had a costume party. Um, so this is the Driscoll Hotel Corporation. These are the members of the community that really helped bring the Driscoll back to life. And it's still here today. Yeah. Thank goodness, because we don't want another parking lot. Audrey, thank you for giving me a little bit of that tour today. And if people want to come see you, come on a tour, what's the best way to get the information? Yeah, so we have the tour every day at 4 p.m. Um, you can register for that on Talk. If you are not a hotel guest, it's $10. Um, I think it's like a, a well-spent $10. Yeah. It's great to get to see all the spaces, take a little journey, go explore. And there's so much that we didn't even touch on, too, that is in this building. But these are just little bits and parts of it. So... I'm excited to take some of that dress school history home with me and keep learning more about it as I live in Austin. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you.